Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday. This is going to be a quick, or hopefully quick, little video for Saturday here in the Atlantic. Philippe's racing off out to sea, and we have our eyes turning immediately to the area of greatest activity, which is now over here towards the Bahamas and Cuba and Florida. And this is flaring up because of the pattern we've been talking about. If we look at the surface map, here's the eastern seaboard here in Florida down here. Notice all the high pressure, 1,034 millibars over Virginia and Pennsylvania up here. This monster high after being here for a few days. We've been talking about this one coming in with cooler air and how the pressure gradient on the southern side would bring near gale force winds into Florida. And indeed, there's a ship north of the Bahamas here that reported sustained winds of over 40 knots this morning. And this is there's basically minimal tropical storm conditions occurring in the northern Bahamas and east of Florida here this morning bashing the coast with lots of heavy rain. And we talked about how when this high pressure builds in here, we were going to start seeing this activity winding up and low pressure trying to develop in the extreme northwest Caribbean, eastern Gulf of Mexico, or the Bahamas. And we are seeing that activity winding up in here. If we go over to the water vapor imagery, we can see that one of the drivers of this is a negatively tilted upper trough over here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And it's negatively tilted because it's leaning left of north-south here. And the reason it's starting to lean this way is partly because there's outflow coming from the eastern Pacific hurricanes, Hova and Irwin, some of this outflow is coming eastward and pushing the base of this trough, making it swing eastward while the northern part stays put over the Florida panhandle. So now we got the negative tilt. And this is going to aid upper level divergence east of the axis here and induce the development of low pressure. And pressures will slowly lower during this weekend and early next week in this area of the world. Not a lot of really deep convection yet, but there is a lot of heavy rain in these areas in here. Here is the visible imagery. Notice that the band of heaviest cloud and heaviest rain is in here, and that's because there's an old frontal boundary that's still extending all the way up to northeast Florida here, and there's still a very tiny temperature gradient. It was about 70 degrees a couple of hours ago in North Carolina, and then 80 degrees in Savannah, Georgia. So there is a little bit of a temperature difference here as cool air is bleeding out of the northeast, coming in towards this frontal boundary. So you can see there's baroclinic enhancement of the rainfall going on, and central northern Florida are in for several inches of rain, possibly double digit inches in some places by the time this is all over. And we have a surface trough back here over the southeastern Bahamas where the southeast winds are coming in and then curving east. And then we have another surface trough near the Cayman Islands where the surface winds are also coming out of the southeast and then curving this way in the Caribbean. You can kind of see that. It's a weak trough. And the fight with the models still over this system is whether low pressure is going to come out of here and then move into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico stacked underneath of the upper low axis or whether low pressure is going to stay east of Florida. And here's the European from this morning, the 12Z run shows low pressure developing west of Florida in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, but it's still leaning northeast. And these colors represent vorticity. A lot of the spin is out here trying to develop near the old frontal boundary just off of northeast Florida. And here's the 12Z UK Met again now also showing a 1,005 millibar low west of Florida, but notice these colors represent surface winds here. These oranges are near tropical storm force coming right into the South Carolina coast here, and the low pressure looks like it wants to be here. And this is where the instability is greatest, but the, the models keep trying to put the main low underneath of the upper trough. And we may, we may get some kind of a weak low pressure area try to form underneath the trough, but I think the main low and the main weather is going to be out here, and the dominant low of the two will be the one out here. Even if we do have a weak trough here, the main low will be here, as opposed to what the models have been insisting on is that the main one develops here. The only one who hasn't insisted on that is the GFS, which has consistently had the main one out here. This morning's run, this is not a closed low. This is a surface trough leaning northeast here, and it's less aggressive than the last couple of days have been. It had a, a very closed low here with a couple of closed disobars bars around it. But it doesn't really have low pressure out in the Gulf of Mexico here. And all of the weather is going to stay over here. And you can see that it's very dry in the Gulf of Mexico here. So it's going to be hard to get thunderstorm activity and low pressure to get going here of any kind of nature, subtropical, baroclinic, or anything. It's just too dry. And all of the rain is going to stay over Florida or east of Florida in here. This is where all the rainfall is going to remain and on up the eastern seaboard as this tries to move north. 
And so this is going to be a battle between forecasters and meteorologists, forecasters and the models about where this low is really going to develop. It's probably going to start out as a broad mess in here, but if we're looking at the satellite, the the way the trough is oriented, the upper level winds go like this, the low is going to like it over here in the northwestern Bahamas and just off the Florida coast, and I still submit that the track of the main low is going to be either over or just east of Florida over here and then on up the east coast, inland or right up the coast here as this other trough comes in from the west will probably make it still nasty weather even for areas farther north. But even if we get some kind of weak low in the eastern gulf, the main one should stay off to the east where the instability is greatest, where we have the heavy rainfall. And regardless, this is, a, this is just details that we're talking about here and debating. Either way, the weather in here is going to be of tropical storm nature for the northern Bahamas and parts of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. Lots of heavy rain, lots of gusty winds up to gale force, and these areas are going to be getting some very blustery weather over the next few days, three to four to five days of just nasty weather in this area of the world. Nothing too awful dangerous, but minimal tropical storm conditions are what this is going to be like. And so we'll continue to watch this and see if we try to get something named. It's pretty hard to get something worthy of a name out of situations like this, and a lot depends on what the NHC will want to name and what they won't. But we will see whether we actually get a closed low out of this at some point over the next few days. And then later on, a week after that, we may have to start watching the Western Caribbean again for mischief as the monsoon circulation out of the Eastern Pacific comes eastward along with the MJO pulse, and we start to incubate this region for perhaps a more truly tropical storm coming out of that region as well later on this month. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.